Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 198. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have uh, Anne-Marie Cummings, a speaker, a coach, and the author of the upcoming book titled Baby Boomer Bonding, Luxurious Life Without Breaking the Bank. After retiring from 30 years in technology sales, Anne-Marie went on a journey to reinvent herself and determine how to live a meaningful life in retirement. Her years of research and over 50 interviews with men of leading authorities on the retirement led her to realization that most of people are tearful in this final act of the life and don't get the joy out of this time that they should. Hello, Anne-Marie. Hello, good morning. Hello. I know the clan here is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan about your background, about what you did before you started your own online business? Yes, well, for 30 years, I was a technology executive and I worked for some of the largest software and hardware organizations in the world. My last position within the technology sector, I was a global account executive for Royal Bank of Canada. Um, I was with SAP, but I was managing the Royal Bank of Canada worldwide. And it was a career I had for 30 years and I, I loved it, but I wanted to try some something new. Wow. What a journey. So what is the most dangerous belief an online entrepreneur can have? Well, and on, whether it's an online entrepreneur or any entrepreneur, it's really about uh, just following through and never giving up. Just make, you know, there are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days. But if you believe that what you're doing is worthwhile and you're excited about it, then continue with it and don't give up. Why do you do what you do, Han? Well, I do what I do now because I believe that people, once they retire, they lose their relevance or they feel like they they lose their relevance and they don't find as much meaning in life as they did when they were you know, raising families or in a career. And I think this is such a valuable time in life and this age group can contribute so much that I think it's really valuable for people to reinvent themselves and realize that they do have relevance and they do have something to offer their communities and, and the world, frankly. Uh, let's put the man aside. How do you know you are successful? I know I'm successful. I mean, it, it was different when I was in sales. You're successful when you get a big commission check because that's how they, they, that's how they keep score. With what I'm doing now, I know I'm successful when I have a, a boot camp and people leave inspired to do something different with their lives. Can anyone be uh, an entrepreneur or some people more cut out for it than others? Uh, I, I do agree that some people are cut out, more cut out than others. Some people don't lack, they lack the confidence that is required of an entrepreneur to move forward. There are people, and I've had them in my boot camp, who they feel that, you know, having a very, you know, having just a, a day of going to the gym or going to the golf course or doing something like that is fine for them. And if that's fine for you in life, then then let that be your life. But there's a lot of people out there who really feel like they're not contributing enough and they want to contribute more. And those are the type of people that I work with to help them find the next chapter of their life. What have you learned from business as a whole? Oh, uh, <laughs> so many <laughs> things. Um, I was in a very fast paced world and it was very much a man's world as well. So I learned that you have to be flexible. I learned that you have to do what you say you're going to do all the time. And you have to really live with conviction um, and do what you believe is the right thing to do at all times. Whether that suits your employer or not, it's really about being true to yourself. And I think if you live that way or you, and you work in that environment, that you can be successful. Okay, you are a coach yourself. Do you have a coach or a mentor? I do have a coach. I think that everyone should have a coach, frankly. I, I just, and my coach is quite hard on me, which is great because I'm hard on myself as well. 
I, you know, I, a coach really helps you to find answers, but they also give you a nudge and a push when you need a nudge and a push. And for an entrepreneur, there, as I said earlier, there are some days that are going to be difficult. And when you have those days, a coach can be there to really push you forward and be the person who's championing you and making sure that you don't give up. What is the most valuable thing your coach has told you? <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, he's told me that some of my, you know, my coach is very honest and I have a very, very, um, I have a lot of ideas and I like to pass my ideas past my coach so that he can poke holes in them or, you know, try and make me think differently about the goal. And I think that's, that's been really valuable for me. So there, he's tough on me. He's very, very tough on me, actually. What is the most valuable thing you have ever given away? I've given away a lot of money. <laughs> 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 um, but, you know, to, to people who have needed it. Um, I'm very charitable, so I do give a lot to charity. Alzheimer's and cancer, and uh, we have Habitat for Humanity. I give a lot to the, those people. So, yeah, I, I like to give back because I have been very fortunate in my life. What is one thing that has contributed to your success? Um, I think the single thing is that I, I really believe that, um, that, you can't, that everyone should have a success, whether that's financial or, or just happiness. I really believe. And for me, I mean, when I grew up very poor. And I didn't want to live that way my whole life. I was so I wanted I worked really hard to make sure that I had a roof over my head for my family. And that's that's been part of my driving force. What is one thing no one knows about you? <laughs> that no one knows about me. Um, I, I think one of the things that will shock even my closest friends is that I wake up every morning fearful that I will fail. And I think that fear drives me to make sure that I don't. Who well, grounds you? Uh, my family. My son specifically. He is 25 and he is a complete joy and he grounds me. Okay, let's talk about your book. Uh, tell us more about your book and who is this for? How can it help us? Yeah, so the book was published in November last year. And I wrote it specifically to help people reinvent themselves for retirement. And what I had noticed is that people after they retired didn't know what to do with themselves. They felt that they, you know, it was traveling and golf games and all of that stuff. But after the first year, and you've kind of got that out of your system, I was seeing people really starting to get bored, especially people who had a really fulfilling career. So the point of the book was to show people how to live a purpose-filled retirement or the last chapter of your life. So that was that was one of the reasons I wrote the book. The second reason I wrote the book was because I believe if you stay fulfilled for a longer period of time, the less likely your health will fail. So if you wake up every morning with a purpose, you will fulfill the purpose rather than wonder what you should be doing that day. And I really strongly uh, believe that people should try as hard as possible to stay out of retirement homes. And, and I won't speak for retirement homes for where you live, but in North America, uh, it, they're horrible. They're horrible and they are not great places for people to, to go. And so I am you know, an advocate of trying to keep people to live in place longer. But maybe some people, they can't afford it and that's the only place they can just, their family will be like, they don't have the rations close to them. And then they're like, in the last resort, we have to put you in the, in the nursing home. So maybe all oh, retirement home so you can be with other people there and you don't feel lonely at home. So how do you help those ones who don't have relations close to them and they will be lonely at home if they stay in their, in their own places? How can they beat their loneliness? Well, so what I've done is I've created what I call Marigold Mansions. And Marigold Mansions are where people come together. In, in, in specifically, for my case, I have a heritage mansion outside of Toronto, Ontario, and it's it's about six thousand square feet. And people come together to live in this place with not relatives, but with pe peers, people who are of similar age who want to. They don't want to live alone and they don't want to go to a nursing home, but they want to have some support. So someone to speak to every day, someone to have meals with every day. 
and they share this beautiful home. So they have private quarters where they're, you know, bedroom and sitting room, but they come together in the kitchen, dining room and living room to have conversations with the other people who live in the, in the home. So I've created the, what I call the miracle of mansion. And, and that's where I'm sitting right now. Wow. Andy, how many do you take home? Because now we have uh, everyone will be like, oh, I want to go there. And how many bedrooms do you have? And uh, who's uh, capable to come there? So in this particular house, there are five bedrooms. And um, anyone who is 55 plus who wants to live in a community where they're supported by their peers. This is, I mean, if you have medical conditions, this is not the place for you because there's no doctors and nurses here. But if you don't want to live alone and you want to come together as a community, then this is the place for you if you're 55 or over. And I'm currently working on a project um, for another mansion, which is 10,000 square feet. And that that's going to be filled. That will have 18 rooms. Wow. Well, how much do you charge? Because um, you said they come and stay there. Is this like one week, one month or can they stay longer? They can stay long- there. Yeah, no, they live there. It's not It's not a hotel. It's actually you're going to be your home. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought maybe they will come like two months and then they will go back and come again. All oh, right. So what is the price? What, how do you charge? So I charge by the room and and the price of this particular one is 2000 Canadian dollars a month. And so they have the, the option of living in, they, as I said, they have their own bedroom and sitting room, but we also have fully furnished and a beautiful accommodation, um, dining room, living room, kitchens. There's two kitchens actually in this house. So it's, it's a very, very beautiful uh, home. Okay, what have you done differently from other, uh, here we call them nursing home or residential homes or retiring homes? What have you done differently? Well, because it's not it's not a, a facility like a, a hospital or a nursing home. It's actually a mansion, um, and you, it, actually you can see the pictures online. But it is actually just a huge mansion that people come to live in. It doesn't feel like a hospital at all. There's no nothing like that. It's like living in a home with other people, but not there's not you know you don't eat at a certain time. You don't. You know how at nursing homes, they have very regimented feels to them. This does not. So everyone comes together. They cook their own food. There's no chef. They come together as if they're one big family. Okay. I also, you say you run boot camps. Tell us more about that as well. Yeah. So the boot camps I run are to help people reinvent themselves. So a a lot of times when you've had a 30-year career like I had in technology, you start wondering what's next. What can I do? Because your, your identity is so closely... Uh, close to what you had been doing for the last X number of years. So we do these workshops and boot camps to help people think through what they really want to do next. And then we create a business plan for them to help them move to the next step. So after the weekend, you literally leave here with a business plan and a project plan of how to get from where you are today to where you want to be. You said when you, you retired from where you sat as a uh, job, you went on reinventing yourself. How long did it take you to really figure this out and uh, come back through the journey? Yeah, so I, I've actually reinvented myself a lot of times in 30 years. I've, you know, I've been, the one thing I did just before I retired from technology was I took a real estate course and I learned how to flip houses. So I was actually doing that part time while I was working my last year in technology. And when I was able to to find success in that, I was then I said to myself, well, if I can find success doing real estate uh, development, then I will retire. And I was successful, quite successful. And I did retire from technology. So I still do uh, real estate development, but now I'm doing it for myself. So I don't flip the houses anymore. I find these mansions that I was talking to you about and I restore them back to their glory days. And that's, and then I fill them with people who want to come together as a community. Wow. So I'm not afraid of failure. So I do try things that maybe other people would be afraid to try, but I, and I help people through that when I coach them because I'm not afraid to fail. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. What, what else could happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you jetted around the world being a manager of the Canadian bank. How did you manage to be successful in, the, in a man's world when you are just a female and you have the family? 
tell someone who is also going through that and trying to do that on the side, even if they are not yet on the retirement side, but they, they want to look, to look in their career like that in the men's world, how can they compete and be successful like what you did? Yeah, I think my, the, the reason I was so successful in business is because I when I said I would do something, I always did it. I never let my clients down. If they asked for something and I said I would do it, then I always did it. And it, it was really that simple. If you just think about the basics, and if you think about even service that you get in other places that you go, when someone lets you down, you get disappointed with that particular company. But when someone comes through, it, it's a really great experience. And that's really all I did. I just, I just made sure that when I promised something, I came through with my promise. And as far as being a woman in a man's world, I just went to work to work. I didn't go to work to say I'm a female or a male. I just did it. And there was a lot of obstacles. There's no question because 30 years ago, it was tough being in a man's world, but I just did it. I just worked. I forgot that I was a female. I just did what I said I was going to do. And that was it. And, uh, is that the secret you give someone who wants to really pursue in the man's world? At the moment, we are fighting equal opportunities. What the man can do, a female now can do it. So what is what would be your advice? That they should go to work and they forget who they are? Well, they don't forget who you are, but, you know, yeah. we, sh- we shouldn't put up with uh, being disparaged in any way. Yeah. That's for sure. But you also, if you just go to work and do your job and focus on what is what the right thing to do is and I didn't have a lot of time so to top it all off I was a single mother since my son was four months old so I didn't have time to worry about what men were doing or what they were saying or I just I went to work to you know get my job done make sure my clients were happy come home and feed my family and I just focused on what was important and I think that's you know we sometimes we get we get um, focused on things that are negative and we get de- de- get derailed. So just go to work, focus on what you're supposed to do, focus on doing it the best you can and don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Just focus on what the right thing to do is. Wow. Danny, you, maybe you are lucky or something happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where do we find these um, boot camps and how can we find the book as well and also to join your company? If those people who are listening, they want to send their loved ones there, how can we find you and connect with you? Sure. So I have two websites. The first one is annemariecummingsevents.com and the second one is babyboomerbondingbook.com. Thank you for sharing. So, Clan, there will be more from Anne Mary in the moment. If you are listening on one of the many podcasting platforms rather than my website and you are finding encouraged by Anne Mary's journey, go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for a bonus portion of the interview. The Online Success Journey is a wonderful membership community built for people searching for the path to success. We are one big clan and you can be part of this community for free. Once you have joined the clan, click on part of Anne Marie's journey or over 150 other journeys that are available and learn how you can find the right path for your own online success journey. That's a wrap, clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Anne Marie. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the Online Success Journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, We appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get 
is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form. By clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of patients and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.